Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father Lord, we thank you once again. We exalt and honor your name because of whom you are. You are the I am that I am, the one and the holy God. The one whose dominion and wisdom supersede the entire universe. There is no section of your understanding. Your word has has finding out. Today, O oh Lord, we gather together for this open house fellowship. Where we use opportunity to come together, to learn from you, and hold fellowship together. Because you said in the world, how peaceful is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil poured into the head of Aaron that ran down toward the collar of his beard, down to the skirt of his garment. For peaceful is it when brethren dwell together in unity. Lord, tonight we gather together, not just for nonsense, but to hold a group meeting among ourselves. To teach one another, because the Bible says, I sharpened I. So does a man sharpen the consternant of his brother. Brethren, today we come to you to hear from you once again, to learn the fundamentals of your wisdom and your understanding that your insight provides. Lord, because you alone can give us grace and glory. Lord, we have gathered tonight for no other reason than to say, Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We exalt you. We honor you in the midst of your church. Lord, your children have come together to set us guidelines, to understand the views we must take in order to be able to do the work of the ministry effectively. Lord, tonight, we have gathered together in one accord to ask wisdom, to ask understanding of you. Holy Spirit, take charge of this meeting. Let us not be seen on head, but declare your insight through your servant. Show us the path we should take and grant us divine understanding to be able to instruct your people with the right knowledge and wisdom that is required for this great commission. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, tonight you welcome to again to this Open House Fellowship. Today is the last Saturday of the month where we meet together, not merely for biblical teaching, but to understand our role in global mission. Today, our topic is understanding our role in global mission part one. What is our role? We know that Jesus has given us the great commission. He said, go and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you to the end of time. Now, what is your role in this mission? Is your role to be a Christian and meet with God on the last day, finally end up in heaven? Is that your role in God's mission? Or your role is to go out, evangelize to the lost, save many, snatching them away from the fire, and preparing them for the kingdom of heaven. Today, we are going to be stressing the reason and the pathway which we as CGF have set. Which other ministry, because this is a non-denominational teaching, can buy into in other way to be able to fulfill and finish the Great Commission and to bring about the Lord's swift return. These are the pathway. God bless you as you take part. My name is Missionary Collins. I will be your host for this evening, showing you the path that we will take in order to achieve the Great Commission faster and to bring about the end of time. This part does not require so much commitment or income. 
is the cheapest path we can take to fulfilling the Great Commission and finishing the work before Christ return. Because the Bible says this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all nations as a testimony against them before the end can come. Until this word is preached to all nations, the expected end cannot come. That is the importance of this great commission. And that's why we have our mandate and our part in global mission. God bless you as you participate in today's teaching. Today's teaching, we shall be assessing our role in global mission. This is a message brought to you by Global Pastoral and Missionary Forum. The topic is our role in global mission. Today event, we shall be featuring missionary training, getting the latest news of events and mission to persuade new covenant to join themselves with mission, missionary sending, mission resource, sign up for open house fellowship, CGF fellowship plans and view. And beyond that, CGF mission conference. Those are the part we will be taking tonight to finishing the Great Commission. Our first part for today is to welcome all team and members to this CGF Open House Fellowship Forum, where our missionary journey becomes a reality. Because at this point, your mission dreams is no longer a dream, it has just become a reality. Mission training. To ensure that missionaries are well trained and prepared for the mission, CGF College of Mission has set up an online training that is free for those who want to participate in mission. Once you register, we will send you a code. And with this code, you can use it to assess your mission training online. But if you are in an area where there is no access to internet service, write to us in your registration form, then append you want us to send you an app. You will get access to an app where you do not require internet service for its functionality. It's a completely Android app which is free and we will send it to your location and all the teaching are pre-installed so you do not need to connect to internet. Once it's downloaded into your phone, you can use it to study for yourself and to learn the principle of mission. Then your test should be supervised by your team leader and the results sent to us via mail. And then when your training is completed, we will send you the mission certificate for those who has ability to take part and complete the mission. And note, the mission certificate is not a relic that we collect and put it in the short room. The mission certificate is for outreach. We only give missionaries who are ready to serve our certificate in CGF. We don't know about other mission agencies. Because in the mission in the CGF School of Mission, for those who are partaking in a free course, the school of mission is free for missionary who wishes to serve in various fields. But for those who are interested in gaining academic certificate, they have to pay for the training. God bless as you participate. Brethren, tonight, before we start, I will want us to take a hint at the scripture to assess what God's word teaches us in the book of Deuteronomy, 
Deuteronomy. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Deuteronomy 6 from verse 6 to 7. What does it say? It says, write this commandment that I have given you today on your heart and get them inside of you and then get them inside of your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home, walking in the streets, talking about them from the time you get up in the morning to, the, to when you fall into the bed at night, tie them on your hand and your forehead. As a reminder, inscribe them on the doorpost of your homes and on your city gates. So the word of God is necessary, not only for we to hear it, but to tie it on our doorposts, to write it on the sample in our house, to write them on top of the chair we sit and the table we write, to bind them around our neck as a necklace, and the word of God should be incited into our street gate while we walk in the street. So this word of God is not something we should hide away as believers. Our disciple teaching are for students to follow Jesus, to love others, and to serve the world around them. As students walk through the ministry here, we hope to partner with parents in spiritual formation of students. We do this through biblical teaching, small group, fellowship, service, events designed to mature students into devoted followers of Christ. Our ministry provides safe and positive environment from 6 to 12 grader to connect with God and with our students and with other committed leaders that are dedicated to seeing students grow in Christ. As this word that I commanded you today shall be in your hearts, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk in the streets. And even when you are in dream, let the word of God be registered in your mind so that you dream about them. That is the purpose of today. That is the reason why we train missionary. In CGF, we train you not in psychology, but in commitment to God's will, understanding the basic scriptures. In CGF, we follow the scriptures' guidance of the barriers believers, not of those in Thessalonica, but when we receive the word of God, we receive it gladly, but we go home, searching the scripture, confirming those things we heard, if they be truth. Today, the reason for this teaching is not because we, you cannot follow us every day online when we teach like this. The reason why we set up a teaching is so that you can follow the Bible for yourself, know it for yourself, understand it for yourself, without you needing anyone to teach you. Because the Bible says that anointing you receive, we teach you all things, and you know the fact about it, it cannot lie. It teaches the truth about the Word of God, and it does not lie. So if you hold on to that anointing you receive, it will be your guide through life. So the scriptures we are giving you today, we expect you to commit to it. We expect you to connect with it. We expect this teaching to be a guide to the defenseless, to protect you from danger, for you to bind them around your waist, to sleep with them in the night, and to write them on your doorposts and on top of the seats in your home, 
so that you do not forget the instruction that are written therein. That's why in CGF we give you mission guides. Because we believe that right from the creation of the world, God gave us the right to choose between what is right and what is wrong. To differentiate good from evil. Every man has an inherent right and knowledge, no matter how foolish or illiterate he or she is, can distinguish between good and evil. Because this is inherent from the garden. When man ate the fruit of knowledge of evil, we were able to separate evil from good. And how do we make the choices? Sometimes evil seems more appealing. The choice of evil seems more attractive to the eye. That every believer, on first look, will want to continue in evil. Because evil is full of attraction. It's magnetic. If your mind is not so in it, by the time you give him 15, 20 minutes, the seed of wickedness will begin to grow because it is inherent in man. And because of this seed of wickedness that will grow, you end up succumbing to the devil's wish for you rather than God's plan for your destiny. That's why the sanctuary says to you that the word, O Lord, has I kept in my heart. Do you know why? So that I cannot sin against thee. Because when the word of God is inherent in your heart, sin cannot come in. When you fill your heart with positive thinking, with the knowledge of God, you get rid of everything that leads you to sin. You discover that you will be able to stand the test of time. The children of Israel left Egypt. There was a lot of destruction in Egypt. They are coming to the land of Canaan. Not all the inhabitants have been conquered. And behold, they have idols. They have various things that God warned the children of Israel about. How do they overcome? The Lord gave them a simple instruction. Write the laws of God on your doorpost. Bind them upon your neck. Write them on the palm of your hand. When you go in the street, recite it. When you sit at home, recite it. When you are walking on the, in your workplace, memorize it. Meditate upon the work of God day and night. Do you know what will happen if you do that? The Bible says this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. In it you shall meditate upon day and night. For in it you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. If you can memorize and meditate upon the word of God day and night, you will not only prosper, you will have good success. Oh, you want to be intelligent? You want to be wise? Fear the Lord. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You want to have understanding of things around you? Have the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of the Most High is understanding. It gives wisdom to the simple. So, these are all you need that will drive you through life. Through thickness, through doubts, through storms. All you need as a Christian, as a believer, is to bind the word of God around your neck. Study to show thyself approved unto God. God does not encourage blind obedience. There are so many Christians who your minister calls you and said, don't worry, don't listen to any other person, just listen to me. I am saying the truth. God disagrees with blind obedience. The Lord said, prove me. 
He did not say, believe what I say. He said, prove me. And hold on to that which is good. Prove me. Take the word of God. Put it in a test tube. Prove it. God said, raise the dead. Try it. Follow the same principle. He followed. He said, heal the sick. Prove it. He said, cast that devil. Prove it. He said, go. These signs will follow them that believe. Believe. And see if the sign refuse to follow you. Prove it. God did not say, try me. But he said, prove me. Hold on to that which is God. If God says, in the book of Noah, yes, it's a man, Bala, he was called to cause the children of God. God made a covenant with Abraham a long time ago. At this point, Abraham is dead and forgotten. Jacob, uh, Isaac, his son, dead, forgotten. Jacob, his son's dead and forgotten. This is four generations later. And behold, a prophet was called, not even from the tribe of Israel, not even a son of Abraham. He was called to curse Israel for him. He said, come and curse these people so that I can defeat them. Because whoever you curse is cursed. Whoever you bless is blessed. And Balaam looked and said, I cannot do what is good or evil if the Lord has not permitted. And he went and said, Set before me seven bullock. And they ran upon each other. And when this was done, he went before his burnt offering to receive a chastening from the Lord. And what did, what did happen? God looked down on his sacrifice and God met him. God said to him, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man that he should repent. Has he spoken? Will he not do it? Has he promised? Will he not make it good? And I'm here to tell you tonight, God honor his word more than his name. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The reason why many people try and they try to run into the world, the name of the Lord, and they were not saved, is not because God has no ability to save. It's because he, it is specific. Only the righteous can run into the name of the Lord and be saved. But somebody will say, God said in his word, all our righteousness are as baby rag before him. How can we get the righteousness to run into the word of God, the name of the Lord, so that we can be saved? That's why you need study. God is not asking you for your own righteousness because your righteousness is as fading right before him. He is asking you to receive Christ's righteousness because in the garden, Adam did not succeed to cover himself with fig and tree leaves they cut to make a prop for themselves. But rather, it was by the slaughter of an innocent lamb they were clotted. God is not asking you to clot yourself from your sin. He's asking you to come to him so that the blood of an innocent lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world can be used for your own covering. That's all we are calling you to study. Because you cannot deliver the truth to others if you did not know. What does the Bible tell us? If the blind leads the blind, they both fall into a ditch. God is expecting you to come to him so that he will open your eyes and anoint it with eyes left so that you can see. And when you see clearly, you can be able to remove the speck from your brother's eyes. 
How can you say to your brother, come, let me remove this speck from your eye? Why in your own eye there is a beam? If you must first of all remove the beam from your eye so that you can see clearly to remove the speck from off your brother's eyes. And how can beam be removed from your eyes? By writing the word of God upon your forehead? By writing the word of God upon your doorposts? By writing the word of God upon your dream, by writing it upon your seats, by memorizing it in the streets, by memorizing it in your night, whenever you go out, whenever you come in, whenever you are sitting, whenever you are standing up, let the word of God be in your mouth. That's what the Bible says, the word has I hidden in my heart so that I cannot sin against thee. Let the word of God be hidden in your heart today and sin will flee from you. When Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus did not overcome Satan by jungleries or by speaking in tongues or by prayer. He overcome by it is written. When the word of God is in you, whatever situation that you confront in life can be confronted by a single understanding. It is is written because everything you need and all solution to your problem are written in advance that's why God said to Habakkuk write the vision make it plain put it upon a stone that it may run for many days and at the end I tell you the truth it will speak and it will not lie the vision are written down but what happens if you refuse to read those visions? Can the vision, can you run if you refuse to read? No. You can only run with the vision if you read it. I know those days we were told that if you want to hide anything from a black man, you hide it inside a book. Because the black will not find read books. But not nowadays. We understand by books. As Daniel understood by book. Because if you don't read for yourself, you will keep being deceived. The Bible says the end of the world, the matting of the Lord's house will be high and lifted up. All nations of the earth will flow to it. By the time, many will run to and flow. Do you know why? Knowledge will increase. If you have no understanding, and you have no knowledge, you cannot be able to tap from the end time wisdom that God is releasing. Brethren, that is the first part of our teaching for today. Mission training. The reason why CGF Open Mission Training are for students to grow in the knowledge and fear of the Lord. So that wisdom can be given to us to stand tall in the ministry. Brethren, tonight it is inherent for every missionary to study to show themselves approved unto God as a workman that needed not to be ashamed but rightfully dividing the word of God. That's why the CGF Bible School is for every believer. We want all Christians to study, study to show themselves approved unto God. There are some paid courses, those are only meant for those, but the preliminary course you need to either become a missionary or to study discipleship, they are free courses. You can take it free of charge at CGF College. You only pay for certificates. Your registration is free and your Study is free. We are what certificate to all students who have completed their training. And we expect you to participate in this training so that we can help you build up your knowledge of the Word of God. So that one day you will also stand before a cloud of people. And you also have a testimony like the rest cloud of witnesses that has passed before us. God bless you as you participate in this training.
The next is getting the latest news and events of missions around the world. CGF Mission on Veil Magazine. I will go through the contest of our last month on Veil Magazine while we study this mission outreach. CGF Mission on Veil Magazine. Let us just handle some preliminary goals of what this magazine teaches us and why it is necessary for you to register to receive a copy from us every month. For now, these articles are free. It doesn't cost anyone any money. CGF Mission on Veil is your fastest update about God's missions events. So the first edition was released in April 12th. The next edition will come out in June 12th. What latest Christian news? Under what latest Christian news on this heading we have a lot talks about Senate or whatever. So these topics are rotationals every month. We talk about what latest news. We talk about latest prophetic events and we talk about church latest and salvation. So these are the topics that comes out every time the Unveil magazine is taught. The next thing we learn about this magazine is about this magazine. What is it really about? What does the magazine teach us? What do we learn in CGF Open Magazine? Under CGF Open Magazine, we learn under CGF Mission Portal Magazine, what do we learn? And under the magazine, we learn from a particular references from the scriptures which teaches us something unique about salvation, about the starting of the mission. And we also give an opportunity for missionaries to register their business and events with CGF magazine. And this also gives church opportunity to register programs, especially for upcoming ministry who are just starting. And this we do at a very cheap rate for them and the money goes into the sponsorship of the mission. CGF Mission Magazine Portal starts as an avenue to shine light on major events in God's mission. Jesus came to restore our relationship with him. And this article is dedicated to loving and committed practical means in our daily lives. So, this, uh, the CGF admin members, they are contributors to this magazine. CGF Mission of Veil is a monthly Christian information article written to help and to help Christian watch out for the fulfillment of biblical prophecy and the role of church in God's mission. This article is to showcase missionary events and programs. The Open House team also are contributors. They wrote, the Open Heart Fellowship is a non-denominational Christian mission fellowship. CGF Porter is an avenue where, missionary, where mission teams can express themselves and write their articles about activity and events and schedules. So talking about activity and events and schedule, let's go to the last page of this magazine. The last page of this magazine is a place where churches are allowed to book adverts. You can book your adverts by writing to info at CGF logs, nslogin.app or this, in, this outreach also contains reference to the CGF annual mission conference which we shall be discussing later, taking the missionary which stated taking our community by storm. 
So this emission for this year will be taking place in September. But before then, we have actually scattered from August to September. From the 9th of August, I'll be in Africa for an outreach, and I will be teaching in various communities. If you want to support us and help us with resources needed for travel, for transport, for helps in all those communities, you can write us or send your donation. God bless you as you participate. So we also have a counseling meetings. Most information about the missions are stated in the mission magazine. Now we have dealt with the mission magazine. Or we'll use opportunity to go to the next article on the line, which is mission sending. Mission sending. Sometimes many people have been writing, asking, do you send missionary? Yes, we send mission. But CGL for now, we are only into short term mission sending because long term mission requires a lot of resources. Since the mission has no many sponsors and volunteers, and we have also committed that members should make a monthly contribution to the mission welfare so that we can have enough income to send further missionaries and to assist those in need. So, because CGF is a member sponsored mission. So most time we never receive most any donation or we receive little. So we have always worked with what God has provided for us. If we has make a pledge to you we have not redeemed at this point, it is not because we do not want to. It is because we still do not we still do not have the income to meet up with at all pledges. Because the members financing this mission are few. They finance it with labor of their hands and with what God provided. We don't have any major donation for the work of God. And we're blessed for as many members that has been faithful, committed to promoting the mission and ensuring that the mission is funded for various outreach and projects. God bless you as you participate. And the mission is also we do their due diligence to ensure that money does not prevent us from doing the work of God. We will work with the little resource we have to ensure that the gospel of the kingdom is preached because that is our supreme task. Because evangelism is our supreme task. In mission, it is never a matter of no place to reach. It has always been a place of what the mission can afford. But God bless you for those who are interested and zealous for the work of the ministry. But as we should also understand that as the mission increases, the means for resource in the mission increases. We shall get more with this when we come to dealing with mission resources. God bless you as you participate in this forum. So one of our major role we talk about is mission sending. In mission sending, last year, we completed just few outreach because of the pandemic. But this year, I will be in Nigeria from August. And by that time, we expect to cover various villages and towns within that period I will be in Africa. And within those periods, the mission is a voluntary job. Most of the people who want to join or participate if you cannot participate, you can send us your donation, but the video of those programs will be pasted online on Facebook and YouTube as God permits. And we will also air some of our program directly as network permits us because we know that the internet facility in Africa is very poor. And apart from that, we are not going for a tour guide, we are going for work. And there are a lot of works to be done. We've already received quite a lot of notice of place we need to visit, prayer we need to carry out, and outreach we need to perform. And God bless you as you participate. Mission sending is done like CGF calendars is released after the mission conference in September. We released a schedule 
after we have met together with all the coordinators of the mission and the team leaders. And when we have met together, we talk about our budget, what we have in our mission account, and how much we can disburse, because there is no one single signature to the mission account. And when we finish discussing our budget, we plan for outreach based on our resources. But mostly, we grow by multiplication of sales. That is because we cannot afford to spend a lot because the resources are limited. Just as you know, like economists always say, human want is unlimited, but resources are scarce. So that is the situation we find ourselves in CJ. We have a global mission. Our feed grows by the day, but the income has not been growing with the feed. So because the income has not been growing with the feed, we have some area where we are deficit because we could not meet up with our goal. Not because it is not part of our plans or they are neglected, it's because we do not yet have enough income to be able to cover those particular areas. And God help us as income rises, we will make sure that all areas are covered. Because we are doing the Lord's work, we believe that God is able to provide for His work. And whenever He provides, anything that we have is for His work. But we as the members must also make a personal contribution to ensure that the work of God is carried out effectively. Because if we do not do this work, God is not going to commission angel to do it for us. We are the one that need to do the work of the Lord. The work of the ministry is for every believer. It is not for some selected few. It is for us. And whatever you commit into the CGF mission, you can be mindful for the accounts anytime, any day. And the breakdown of the expenditure will be handed to you. We spend our income on the mission 100%. We do not spend it on any other things, not even on my trip or transport. I take care of my transport. So we are committed that whatever you spend on the mission, you can demand for the accounts. And you can also book an outreach with CJ. If you do not want to spend money or give donation, you want to book an outreach on behalf of the team, you can write how much you are willing. Sorry, most of our donations are written in Naira. About 30,000 Naira should be about $50. So when we put donation, they don't look at the amount. It's not thousands of thousands. It's mainly in Naira, which is Nigeria currency. So if you want to donate in dollars, any currency is allowed for donation, whether it is $5, $2, you can give. For the sake of the ministry, you can give it to our PayPal account or directly into the mission card pay. When we receive it, we we'll send it to the various agencies that need it. And right now, we are currently raising income for our brethren that are in Congo. They dare need of about two thousand dollars in total for a sensitization of CGF outreach campaign. They have been growing quite alarming. But unfortunately, the incomes are limited. And I would have wanted to help them personally on my own account, but I still have not enough to be able to carry out that assistance. And if you can, we will appreciate your help in joining us to help this brethren preach the gospel. You can donate directly. Their income is on our Facebook page, even their account number. You can send a Western email. You can Put it into the mission account and forward it to them. Whatever you choose, send it to them directly or to us. We oh, will appreciate it. And God bless you as you participate. Brethren, there are a lot of tasks in the work. The Bible says, Great and effectual door is open unto us. But there are many and vast The door is open wide for the mission. There are a lot of ground to cover. But the resources are limited. And we had to pray to the God of harvest to send 
dedicated sponsors into the mission so that we can go out and preach the gospel and don't want to worry more about the resources. Brethren, there are so many things to discuss when it comes to global outreach. You can sponsor an outreach. You can plan an outreach with the team. Like, for example, we are going to Nigeria this August. If you want to come with us, you are welcome. Contact us through our mail or go to our website, fill out the form for conference. You will see the place where they put e-conference. Or you can join us online for mission e-conference. Then fill out the form. Tell us about the plan to attend the conference. We will contact you back and get back to you on the information, based on the information you submitted. And we will be able to add you to our list and plan for your travel because we knew that travel is quite expensive nowadays but if you cannot go with us you can also send help to those who are willing to participate in those area then by so doing you will also have opportunity to spirit the message around your locality you can also join us on an ill mission because most at the end of September, the last week of September, we have an e-mission, an e-conference where we will show you most of the videos we covered from Africa and you also participate with us here online. God bless you as you participate. The next topic we're going to be discussing today, after the mission sending, is the event of how to navigate CGF NS login .app. CGF NS login .app is a multi page website where we have the home page, the about, the contact page, CGF Live, Given, Bookshop, CGF Campus, Video, Training the Trainer. And we have several paths which you can choose to follow. The mission has a growing phase and a developing phase. We also have access to CGF brochure. You can order for one of our books on Amazon. And you can also read some of our guide. Those guides you can read for free. But if you want a copy, you have to pay for it and you send us. Or we'll send you a copy, either a PDF copy or you want a printed copy. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, before we end this teaching for today, I just want you to understand that this is just the part one of this teaching. This teaching will be repeated the last Saturday of every month. That is when this teaching will come again. Now, let us go back to our test where we have opportunity. The Bible says that word has a hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy where we are reading from verse 6 to 9. It says, This word which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. The word that I commanded you this day should be where? In your heart. It should not only be in your mouth, but in your heart. Remember what Christ says salvation is. He said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe from the heart. Confession is made unto salvation from the mouth. Heart believing confirm faith in God. So you must bind this word of God in your heart. It's not something you should take for granted. The word of God is a light and it's a shade. The Bible makes it clear to us it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It can divide any problem into two. The word of God is enough. It doesn't matter what you are going through tonight. I tell you the word is enough. Understand the word. Hold on to it. The word of God will always do what the word of God promise. The scriptures will always fulfill what the scripture promise. 
The Lord says, when I give back my word, I does not expect it to return to me empty. That my word which I speak is like the rain that fall upon the ground. It cannot return to the heaven empty. It must water the earth and give food to the eater and seed to the sower. So is the word that proceeds from my mouth. It cannot return to me empty. It must accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. And it must bring forth the fruit of reward. Tonight, God is sending his word into your life. That as you join together in building the global mission, that God will not turn his back on you. Remember what Jesus promises us. That there is no one of us that give a cup of water to a disciple in the name that this person is a disciple of his that will by any means lose his reward. Next, we are going to be discussing the mission resources. The mission resource. I will read a brief from the mission website on giving. Then I will explain the mission resources to you from there. Start giving. Giving to Christian Global Foundation International Incorporation through a source giving centers. So given in our page, you can be found at our website at cgfnslogin.app under the term, under the topic giving. So, we send giving. The reason why we give as Christian, there is a reason why Christian give. And this reason cannot be underestimated. Because we as believers, unbeliever is not going to preach or help us to build the house of the Lord. I for one does not believe the devil should build the house of God. Because if the devil build the house of God, who will worship them? So we do not expect unbeliever or people we are sent to go and save to be the one to pay for the gospel we take to them. So that's why when we go on an outreach, we do not put the bow in front of new converts and ask them to donate for the mission. It is not in our practice in CGF. Donation in CGF is made by members' commitment. People who have matured in faith who has started training with us, who has been partakers of the Open Heart Fellowship, who understand what it means to serve the Lord. Because people cannot give to whom they do not understand. So when we want giving, we want it from believers. We want from Christians. So we are not going to be begging for funds from some NGO and non-governmental agency. Our given is to come from Christian organization, for Christian church, from believers, from converts. That's what we believe in. We send giving statement periodically and make church finances information available to encourage people, faithful and cheerful giving to the Lord's work at Open Heart Fellowship in order to maintain our status as the tax, non taxable organization as NGO in Nigeria, then status of donation to the church, we must demonstrate that they are unconditional and without personal benefits to the donor. And all information about donors are kept confidential. Financial stewardship. We give we believe giving to Christ's mission is an act of worship and that both our attitude towards giving and practice of giving indicates our level of spiritual maturity and commitment to Christ's mission. In Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21, faithful giving also makes us more generous overall, freeing us from the bonds of materialism allowing us to better show Jesus Christ's love to the lost world. 
and providing a platform for further spiritual growth. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8. One of our first goals in handling finances is to go, is to be good and faithful steward of all gifts entrusted to us. We know that we, that all we have is God. First Chronicle, let's read First Chronicle chapter 29. First Chronicle 29. First Chronicle 29 from verse 11 to 12. First Chronicle 29 from verse 11 to 12. And he said, First Chronicle 29 from verse 11 to 12. He said, Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou God, the Lord of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thy, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. And thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thy hand is to make grace, and to give strength to unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee, and praise thy glorious name. That is David speaking, telling us that everything that we have on earth comes from God. And there is nothing that we should restrain from him. And that we are only temporary steward of the money that is given to us. And in all we have is God. And that we are only temporary steward of the money given to us. And in all our dealing, we maintain a sense of humility and gratitude for the material blessing God has provided to sacrificial giving, and a desire to be an example of Christian integrity. Our obligation, therefore, is to send that money prayerfully and frugally and wisely to God. Then, let's discuss about the mission primary source of income. We are in Dependence on God through faithful and generous financial gifts of God's people to underwrite fellowship ministry, mission outreach, ministry expansion, benevolent leads, and so on. So you can also make a financial gift by just clicking on our website at cgfnslogin.app. We believe that God has called us to ministry within our midst. God provides everything we need for accomplishing the task He gives us. We will not operate the ministry that God has called us into on a deficit. We will communicate financially truthfully without any ma manipulation or spin. Christian Global Ministry Giving We commit a minimum of 60 percent of the general fund offering to God works in the, our world and country today and country community individuals also contribute beyond our budget support CGF missionaries through designated gifts to mission and specific missionaries. The fellowship has a global mission outreach team that use formal guidelines to review all mission requests and all expenditures are made under oversight of the coordinator board. 
financial Bible teaching. We teach biblical financial principles to our congregation through the Bible studies, seminars, Simon etc. The goal for this teaching is to help people become financially free in their life in order to serve and honor God more faithfully and fully. It is our desire to encourage our Lord followers to become faithful and generous giver to the Lord's work. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 6 to 7. Benevolent giving. We believe church and mission should care for those in need. Thus, we have part of our annual budget designated towards benevolence to help people that are attending our open house fellowship. For those outside of our mission family, we give our budget to the CGF crisis team to oversee the giving of funds to those in need. Now, let's talk about our ministry projects. We seek to meet larger financial need for association in ministry expansion, building projects, equipment system, vehicles, land, and etc. Our ministries need mission trips, relief projects, etc. Through communication, communicating the plans and needs of God people. And our individual, through letter, presentation, campaign, visit, etc. Open Heart Fellowship, we have said this little gift for board approved ministers' projects and major expenditure. Open Heart Fellowship abides by all national and international donations according to regulation. The mission does not return donated funds. No, no tax deductible gift may be used to pass money or benefit to any named individual. Financial control. We exercise careful management and financial control to ensure frugal, accountable, and appropriate spending. We have written internal financial policies that govern the way we approve expenditures and how we receive donations. For instance, spending is controlled by check requests that must be approved based on level of designated spending authority. All checks require signature from a limited number of approved signatories. And our annual budget is developed through the works of the coordinator, finance team, and approved at multiple levels, involving persons most directly in touch with ministry coordinator and experts, including the review of the supervisors. Our financial bookkeeper, pastors, pastoral staff, Ultimately, the trustee, coordinators committee, admin board, we avoid conflict of interest and any member receiving personal benefit involving transaction with mission members by receiving competitive bid, evaluating comparative evaluation. When we make a purchase, we we'll pay the invoice within 30 days and where, whenever possible, we do not not intend to use benefit from money owns to vendors. Financial record and report disclosure. Our intention at Open Heart Fellowship is to have all transparencies in all financial matter. We provide simplified snapshots of financial status, general giving and expenses. And our missionary years and conference weekly service program any individual who would like to review the mission financial record or would like to ask detailed financial questions is always welcome to schedule an appointment with a church leader equipped to respond to such inquiries. We respect the privacy of each staff member and have process to guide against compensation, comparison among staff. All salaries and benefit information are held confidential. CGL Treasurer Leonard Oko also, along with administrative staff, are written 2002 report, 20 report of to the congregation, provided financial statement at the end of 2019 
and present funds 22 operation budget summary on behalf of the trustee. Click here to read treasurer's report. Then, method of giving. We encourage general giving by allowing various ways faithfully given through whatever means it provides. It's most helpful. Online giving through our secure financial portal, cash during Sunday or evening worship, drop off at CGF office during normal business hour, check money order, pay directly into the in three ways, place offering plates on Sunday during worship or provided off at OHF offices. Mail to Christian Global Foundation at EHO or directly to the bank financial. So God bless you as you participate. This is all we can take for today. Join us for the part two of this teaching where we showed you your role in global mission and how to achieve it. God bless you as you participate. These teachings, we expect it to continue by the coming, by the ending of May, we will also meet again to discuss this forum. God bless you as you participate. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, Father Lord, we use this opportunity to exalt your name, to honor you on behalf of our members who has not been able to participate in this meeting. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for giving them guidance and understanding, wisdom and knowledge, insight into your word, to be able to learn from you and hearken to what you have to say. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father Lord, as many that are in need in the mission, that wishes to support the mission, but they are held by financially, Father Lord, we stretch hand of blessing, hand of opportunity into their life. And we say, Lord, they should open their mouth wide from today and you will feel it. You will feel it with goodness. You will feel it with your blessing. You will feel it with your favor. You will feel it with your honor. For as many that will take this thought to heart and they will give for the work of the Lord. Father, Lord, your giving will not be in vain. Father, because they will come and carry the wood and go to the mountain and build you a house and that so that you will take pleasure in it. Father, Lord, you will also build their life. That you will take pleasure in their life. Father, Lord God of hosts, as they water your heart, they also will be watered. Their family will be watered. Their business will be watered. Their job will be watered. Everything they lay their hand upon will prosper. God bless you as you participate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, this is where we end for today. We'll see you again by month ending.